Now let's go to uh, Doug Hagman. Thank you, Doug, for joining us. Well, thanks for having me. Really appreciate it. And you're right on the money in terms of your assessment. Hitting them on a state level, I think, would be much more effective than attempting to defund them uh, uh, from a federal level. However, um, and, and I'm not sure how many people know this, according to their 2014 annual report, the uh, the taxpayer funded government health services for Planned Parenthood, a half a billion dollars, $540.6 yes. million. Dollars. Yes. Uh, that's not a cheap date. Yeah. Ladies. Absolutely. They're getting a massive amount of money at the federal level. So we can't just fight it at the local level. Here in Austin, Doug, we found out when we talked to Abby Johnson, we found out that just in the city of Austin, they have given Planned Parenthood a 20-year lease, $1 a year for a 7,000-square-foot facility. And I think this kind of thing is happening all over the country, and most people don't know about it. We know about the half a billion dollars, uh, and, there, and it's difficult to stop that. But many people don't know about these other things that are being done, like a $1 lease for a 7,000-square-foot facility that are being done locally. And that's going to be easier. It's going to still be difficult to change, but that's kind of thing. And, and change the politicians if you can't change the lease. <laughs> that kind of thing is still uh, pretty much in the dark, and people don't understand all those other subsidies that, that Planned Parenthood is getting at various other levels. Yeah, uh, Bloomberg uh, donated $250,000 here not too long ago. Mm -hmm. it, but, but, you know, when we look at this, and, and this is kind of why I, I was really uh, wanted to focus on this, I, I believe that the two of the greatest threats to the stability of our Republican form of government and, and our rights guaranteed by the Bill of Rights are abortion and gun control. I mean, when you look at it, the Supreme Court justices who voted for abortion, well, this is back, you know, they acted outside of the pale, of course, outside of the Constitution, when they said the Fourth Amendment right to privacy, that right could be interpreted as rights uh, of a woman to abort her unborn child. So they perverted the, uh, the Constitution uh, a number of years ago, but well, back in, in 73, and have uh, used that as a template and are using that, that very same uh, tactic to uh, attack us on the level of the Second Amendment. So I think the, the reason, I, th I think people have to understand the, uh, the assault on the American, or on the Constitution uh, by the people in power. And, and the, the other side of that, very closely related, you know, as Americans, and I, I know this kind of sounds pretty nebulous and, and vague, but I think we've, I think as Americans, we've tolerated, we've embraced, and we've even championed, championed a lot of things that would have horrified our parents and our grandparents generations ago. Oh, absolutely, uh, yes. You know, so it, it, when we look at this, uh, banning the Ten Commandments, and we're seeing this incre incremental attack on uh, our freedoms via Christianity, attack on Christianity. Uh, we're seeing the Ten Commandments expunged from public places, erased. We're, we're, we're looking at... Uh, uh, we're looking at the uh, uh, slow starvation of, of the of the disabled. All of this points to genocide and eugenics. People don't, and, and you know, I was listening to you earlier. I mean, people don't have this understanding of what Planned Parenthood, how it started, how what it's rooted in, and it's a genocidal type program. It's eugenics. It's and of all races, of all people, black people should be just outraged over what's going on because, at its core. The uh, Sanger and, and, you know, back in, in the Sanger days, uh, pre-Planned Parenthood, establishing Planned Parenthood, of course, Margaret Sanger was the uh, most hideous form of racist around where she wanted to cleanse society uh, of black people and of people with any kind of disability. So people really need to, to get into the meat of this. And mainstream media is not touching any of this. They're not understanding that, uh, you know, the Guidestones, Georgia Guidestones are, in fact, uh, real, for example. And, and you know, they mean to, uh, the powers that be, the power elite, mean to cut down the COVID population down to half a, half, half a million or half a billion people. Oh, absolutely. You're talking about the Georgia Guidestones. Everybody's saying, well, you know, who is it that put that up there? We don't really know who put that up there. Well, we know what the Pope is saying now. And we know who he's made one of his top scientific advisors, Shellen Huber. And the Pope is coming and selling his global warming agenda 
Yep. And doing it in the name, you know, using this guy that has talked about having massive depopulation, just like the Georgia Guidestones are talking about, just like you mentioned. Shellen Huber is talking about getting rid of most of the people on Earth and establishing a planetary governance, a planetary council, a planetary court to haul you before, all in the name of global warming. And now we've got a face on it. We've got the Pope doing it. We've got Prince Charles doing it. We've got Obama doing it. These guys are openly doing it. What they were hiding before when they anonymously put up the Georgia Guidestones. It, it, exactly. And, and I think if people look at the bigger picture of this, we can see where this is just one part, but and I'll buy it, a very important part of the globalist agenda. And uh, uh, and they're going to fight tooth and nail. The globalists are going to fight tooth and nail. The, the people in, in power in Congress, they're going to fight to make sure that none of this, none of these videos um, see the light of day as, as evidenced by the injunction. However, um, uh, and, and I'll say this, I, I spent uh, a number of years as an operational asset for the FBI taking covert video just like the Center for Medical Progress. Hang on, Doug. we got to talk about that. When we come back, we've got to go to a break. Doug Hagman of Hagman and Hagman. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, and we're talking to Doug Hagman of Hagman and Hagman.com. That's his website. He's also a multi-state licensed private investigator, and we has a uh, uh, he's a CEO of an investigative agency. We're going to talk to him about uh, how investigations are done in light of Planned Parenthood. And of course, we had the vote yesterday, and you can see the story on Infowars.com. Democrats who voted against defunding Planned Parenthood never even watched the expose. Some bizarrely claim that the footage is doctored. Look, we've been told by the Obama administration that these videos are a conspiracy, that they're a hoax. Now we have... Uh, we have Representative Alan Grayson says, Tonight a bunch of men will vote against women seeing doctors, quote unquote, because they saw a doctored video. That's the GOP for you. Yeah, you know what? These guys are butchers. They're not doctors. Joseph Mingala was a doctor too, okay? A doctor is somebody that helps people, doesn't butcher innocent babies. Now, this is something that was offered by Joni Ernst. Rand Paul, Ted Cruz worked on it. We also had a Democrat, Joe Manchin at least, Voted for it. I don't know how many others, but this is something that we see them pushing back, saying it's just a conspiracy theory. This is something that is an investigation, isn't it, Doug? Uh, you know, you know, th this is so important right now. I think I think we're at a hinge moment in our history, and I'll tell you why. Um, before the break, I was mentioning that as an investigator. I was I worked as an operational asset for the Department of Justice and the FBI, and, and I, I took I took covert video just exactly like we have seen from the Center for Medical Progress. And, and exactly, it, yes. And, and I'll tell you something: every single court case, every every time a case like that went to court, and it was very few because most pled out or pleaded out after knowing that they were on videotape. But in this case. The playbook for defense is the same. The tape's number one. Oh, it's edited. Uh, it, it doesn't, <laughs> hold, you know, it's out of context. Right. Uh, or the second thing is, is um, uh, uh, it, it uh, uh, taken under false pretexts. Well, well, it, it, that happens all the time. It, 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 it's common course for law enforcement, for example, to misrepresent themselves and insert themselves in a situation where there's ongoing criminal activity. And certainly Planned Parenthood falls in that category when they are talking about transporting uh, uh, body parts, period, or, or harvesting body parts. And, and I say infant body parts. Uh, uh, that's exactly what they're doing. So all of this, so the 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 playbook that are being used is being used by the defenders is the same playbook that's being used by defense attorneys all over this country, and it's tried, true, and worn out. And the fact of the matter is, it's nothing but a smokescreen to take away, to deflect from the topic of the felonious activity taking place at Planned Parenthood. And I wrote an article, expose at Parenthood Canada, freepress.com and hagmanhagman.com. Uh, about my experiences as, as an investigator and, and uh, the comparison made between the cries against the video versus what I experienced. That's Bottom a great point, Doug. You know, you're talking about how in every one of these cases, this is a standard investigation procedure. In every yeah. one of these cases, they say this is, uh, this is doctored, this is heavily edited, it's taken out of context, this is entrapment. And yet, yeah. when, and, and sometimes it can be entrapment when the FBI does it, when they create. Uh, the threat when they go into these many of these fake terrorist uh, situations that they they create out of uh, whole cloth 
They create the organization. They entrap people into this. They equip them. They drive them to the place. In many cases like that, I do believe that it's entrapment. But when there's a criminal operation that is going on that they know about, and then they come in and say, well, we want to sell to your criminal organization or buy from it or, or be a part of it or whatever. They know that this is already going on. And then they come in there under those circumstances. That's not entrapment. That's an investigation. And that's exactly what this Planned Parenthood video is. Yeah, and, and, and I, I don't mean to belabor the point, but, but entrapment would be uh, if, 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 let's say, a business owner or a pizza shop owner making pizzas never had a problem with the criminal uh, history at all. And, and, they, and an FBI agent comes in and says, look, I want you to build a bomb. I'm going to yeah. help. You know, that's entrapment. Exactly. Exactly. This is uh, this is a course of uh, of conduct that, that these people are engaged in every single day. They're not making, they're not asking anything except for information. And if you watch the tapes, the videos closely. And by the way, the information I got, and I'll, I'll share this on uh, Infowars uh, exclusively. Information I got, the uh, video that they have is extremely damning. Um, we haven't seen we haven't seen the best yet. The best is yet to come, and it's gonna, it's just going to be um, it's going to indict. Many could indict many people in terms of criminal activity, uh, sickening criminal activity. And then there's the satanic, the satanic element of this too that's not being reported. Um, and, and I'll just briefly touch on that. The information I have is well, hang on, we're going to talk about that when we come. We've got to go to another break, but that, yeah, I, I agree with you. I think the most damning stuff is definitely to come. They had nine videos, we have had, I think, just the fifth one released today. That's why they want to stop this. That's why they're trying to shut it down using the court. Stay with us. We'll be right back with Doug Hagman of HagmanandHagman.com. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, and we're talking to Doug Hagman of HagmanandHagman.com. And, of course, Doug Hagman is the CEO of a multi-state investigative uh, agency, and he's had experience in the past doing investigations, doing them for the government. He was explaining to us before the break the difference between entrapment and investigation and how people will uh, use these same types of excuses and defending their clients caught on tape and illegal activities, the same things that we're seeing being used by the Democrats to explain what's going on with these Planned Parenthood tapes. Oh, they were taken out of context. Uh, we never said that they were heavily edited or we were entrapped. And so I'm going to have them explain to you one more time real quickly because I think it's very important for the public to understand the difference between entrapment and a sting operation of a known criminal organization. So we'll, we'll revisit that. And then he was just beginning to talk about the connection with the satanic with these uh, videos and what we have now learned about that. So we're going to go back to that real briefly before we do. I just want to let you know and remind you again that we have free shipping on everything at InfoWarsLife.com. We've extended that for one more week. And one of the products that we sell there, Oxy Powder. Something you ought to take a look at. It is scientifically formulated to gently cleanse your colon. It doesn't require time off from work. It's all natural. Oxygen colon cleanser. It's available through InfoWarsLife.com. Again, that's Oxy Powder. Let me read you one of the testimonials because we have a lot of testimonials about all of our products. Here's one about uh, Oxy Powder. This is from Milford in Colorado, Aurora, Colorado. It says, Oxy Powder helps me keep my intestines clean and digestion in line. I started taking Oxy Powder a year ago. I've lost 60 pounds. I take six pills at night with water about four hours after my last meal of the day. I also eat well, count my calories, but Oxy Powder has definitely been an invaluable resource in my personal quest towards healthy weight and lifestyle. I now look and feel amazing. Again, go to InfoWarsLife.com, look at the products there, look at the reviews and see if the products are, which ones are right for your health, your condition. You can uh, be helped with that by those uh, reviews that we keep online. That's why we have them there. Again, everything at InfoWarsLife.com is free shipping through this week. We've extended that for one more week as a thank you to those of you who support our operation. Let's go back to uh, Doug Hagman now. And Doug, uh, let's just repeat real quickly what you said because you gave us a legal version of entrapment. You've done this uh, in conjunction with the FBI for real criminals and it's very important, you you know, as an investigator, what needs to be done and what's going to hold up in court and what's not going to hold up in court. You pointed out that they always use the excuse this was taken out of context. Uh, they heavily edited this or they say entrapment. Tell us again the difference between entrapment and something where they're investigating a known criminal organization presenting themselves 
in there in a, in a false pretext, but something where they're investigating a known criminal activity. Yeah, and just to be clear, I'm not an attorney. I'm an investigator by mm-hmm. profession. And, and the bottom line is this. Entrapment would entail or would uh, necessitate someone uh, of the government or a law enforcement official going into, I don't know, a business, let's say a pizza shop owner, and out of the blue, looking at the, uh, the owner and saying, look, I want you to build me a bomb, or I want you to here, I want you to traffic in some drugs here. And, and something that the, the pizza shop owner would not normally do, or the person would not normally do, it's not within his uh, uh, realm of business. And, 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 and then can keep, uh, you know, uh, har- harassing the, the uh, business owner to do that. And that's entrapment. I mean, clear and simple. But here you've got an operation, already existing operation, that is dealing in the, the, the uh, trafficking of human body parts. And I want to really drive that home. This is what they're doing. The, the covert operatives going in are not doing, are not asking anything, uh, asking these people to do anything outside of what they're already doing. And as a matter of fact, they're not asking them to do anything, period. All of, every tape I've seen, uh, every video I've seen, is merely inquiries as to price, haggling over price for... Exactly. We've already established what they are. We're just exactly. haggling over the price, precisely. Okay. And, and you know, it, it, this video that's come out today is not just baby body parts. It's an entire bodies of babies that they're offering out there. And when they, yeah. we see these, these videos in the past, they say, well, this is the way we've done it in the past with other organizations. That's not entrapment. That's showing a pattern of behavior. And we saw in the very first uh, video, it's, no, I think it was in the second video, the, uh, it was the Lamborghini lady. She was <laughs> talking about how they had this one organization come in. She says, well, this lady comes in. She goes through everything. She cuts it up. She takes the parts that she needs. We don't have to do anything. It's very profitable. And that's the only exclusion that they have under the law is that they can get compensated for some things that they might do associated with it, but she makes it clear they weren't doing anything. They were just getting the money, just selling the parts. Yeah, yes. And, and, you know, in later later term uh, uh, abortions, and I use that word, uh, for example, the difference between Murder, which is obviously against the law, and an abortion is about three inches. Mm-hmm. What what what, uh, what they're doing is is they're uh, the mechanics of it is they're flipping the baby around to present breech first, and legs come out, uh, keeping the head inside of the woman, and as long as the head is inside, they're able to do whatever to to kill the to kill the unborn child, and that protects them legally. It's just a mere three inches that separates a first-degree murder charge with a, uh, a, a legal process of abortion. And they know but, that, and so they talk about how they, well, if, if you've got particular things that you want, we can make arrangements so that we reposition the baby into that brief, breech birth position that you're talking about. So they know where the lines are drawn, and they're even talking on this video about how they can skirt around those lines. Exactly. And I know we're kind of short on time, but uh, one thing I wanted to touch on, too, is we have to follow the money. I think people would be surprised that once once the money, you follow the money, you follow the people involved in this, the very people who are involved in Planned Parenthood, who are involved in the uh, national abortion rights, all of these different uh, minor organizations or smaller organizations out there are there's an incestuous involvement between them and the globalist between them and the the gang of eight for example the the leaders of congress and um, as well there is a satanic element to this that people well, we don't we don't talk about this in polite company, actually, right? We yeah. don't like to talk this, it, but 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 you know the satanic temple in Detroit, uh, Joe, uh, my son, uh, who co-hosts the show with me, was, was telling me about the satanic temple in Detroit. Well, it, it, that's that uh, Baphomet uh, statue that was the largest public uh, satanic ceremony in history. They, they were charged twenty five seventy five dollars for tickets. Mm-hmm. Well, proceeds went to support the reproductive rights. Of, uh, of of abortion and, and um, they collected some thirty two thousand, I believe, so far, uh, to to fund these abortion um, rituals. And, and I say rituals because in the in the scheme of a satanic temple, when you start looking at who these people are, what their practices are, uh, the satanic uh, temple itself, TST, uh, they are actually um, promoting this satanic aspect element of. Uh, children child sacrifice. And- well, we've seen that here in Texas, 
We had the uh, massive rallies at the state capitol when they were talking about that, and they had people out there chanting, Hail Satan. We saw it when the InfoWars reporters went to the Planned Parenthood uh, abortion clinic here. Uh, yeah. It always seems to come up, and it's brought up by the people who are there supporting abortion. Yeah, I mean, I was it's not us. We're not saying, hey, you're a bunch of Satanists. No, they bring it up. They start yeah. saying that. Hey, I mean, you, you guys almost knocked me off my chair when I saw that, when you, when you had that, uh, that, that, that clip of that woman, uh, Hail Satan, and, and the Satanic chants and what have you. It was just it was incredible. But, but, but see, this is how overt this has become, and I think, uh, and, and why this is being fought so hard and the bottom line is this. This is part of a genocidal program. It's part of eugenics. It's part of uh, really uh, sculpting the DNA when we hear about, uh, well, we're going to, we're going to, uh, I mean, this is what Matt uh, or uh, Margaret Sanger was all about. And a woman that's less known, Madame Colante, uh, who was a, a Marxist socialist, well, communist, I should say. She was the, the, the original champion of abortion rights uh, back in the early 20th century. And when you see, when you start peeling back the layers, you see uh, Colante's book, uh, Communism and the Family. You, you see that this, what we're seeing right now, is an attack on the nuclear or, or the traditional family or the family itself. And you can see that it's a takedown of our, our nation through the takedown of our family and the middle class. And of course, the constitutional rights of, of all people. People say, "Well, this is you know we're we're, we're actually uh, for constitutional rights via the Fourth Amendment." Now, that's a perversion of the Constitution. People really need to understand what's going on and who are the, and the people who are behind it. And and that's where I believe once that knowledge gets out there, there's no putting the genie back in the bottle. We need to really push that hard, in my view, anyway. And oh, I absolutely I agree with you, Doug. And, and and of course, we also see these pedophile rings that are being run by the most powerful elite in our country and the UK. We see American ambassadors uh, caught up in this over and over again. It seems that these things all go hand in hand. The pedophile rings, the uh, satanic uh, cult worship, as, as Alex Jones went to Bohemian Grove and saw the sacrifice of care. I mean, the thing is basically a reenactment of a Moloch sacrifice of passing Ooh. their children, sacrificing their babies for prosperity. And certainly that is subconsciously at the very least if it's not overt if it's not direct if it's not a conscious reference it is subconsciously what they are telling people when they bring them in and say we want to help you plan your family and so forth abby johnson says no they're pushing abortions and one of the ways that they do that is to tell you you're not going to be able to afford these children do you realize how much money they're going to cost you over 20 years they're selling this as a means of your own personal prosperity Exactly. And this fits so well into the globalist agenda. It's, it's, it's everything is people need to take a, a number of steps back and look at the entire picture. I mean, we spent a lot of time talking about the uh, uh, Planned Parenthood issue to to understand how important that is to the greater mechanics of the globalist issue, uh, in particular, the homosexual agenda. There is a direct link between Planned Parenthood and what they're doing in the homosexual agenda to, to grant uh, rights under the Constitution that were never there in the first place, to change the Constitution. To, uh, and and so, so people need to understand the vastness and, and the importance and really the, sorry, but the evil nature. No, I'm not sorry. The evil nature of what we're looking at, whether it's Planned Parenthood or whether it's this uh, ostensible fight for equal rights when it's not uh, for the homosexual marriage, uh, twisting of the family and such. Well, so I think this, there's an interesting case that, that, that came up today. It was re reported on WND about some gays demanding irreversible harm to a Christian. And this is not a situation. This is in Kentucky. They say that it is not a, a question of whether or not there's going to be a Kentucky marriage license, whether or not there's going to be a same-sex marriage. Uh, this is not about who can marry who in Kentucky law. They say uh, it's, it's not about whether Kentucky will recognize same-sex marriage. The Kentucky governor has declared that Kentucky will. Instead, it's about forcing an individual county clerk to authorize and personally approve same-sex marriage in violation of her fundamental religious liberties. And they point out that Supreme Court Justice Samuel Alito warned that same-sex marriage ruling that they just passed would be used to stamp out those, and that's his term, stamp out those who disagree with the progressive agenda. And in this particular case, Doug, these plaintiffs sought a license from this particular clerk only after learning of her religious objections to same-sex marriage, and they refused to get a license when they could get it elsewhere. So this oh, yeah. is about forcing you to 
bow to their will. It's absolute religious intolerance, and that's where I draw the line. When people cross over that line and say they're not content to do it on their own, but they're going to force this person to do this, they're going to force a, a baker to celebrate their marriage in violation of their religious beliefs and then get a $135,000 judgment against them. That's absolutely outrageous. That's over the line. Nobody should support that if they support individual rights. Oh, but this is just the beginning. You see, yeah. you see and Alex pointed this out, and you've, I've heard you do the same thing. This is just the beginning. What we're witnessing here is the incremental, uh, now exponentially uh, uh, rapid takedown of our religious freedoms. And you, you see, religious freedoms uh, will affect our First Amendment rights, obviously, or do affect our First Amendment rights. Ultimately, there's a war against Christians. Look at who's in the White House. Look at who is really pushing uh, pushing this agenda from the executive level. But look at the acqui acquiescence of the so-called conservatives in Congress. People think that uh, in 2016, we're going to get somebody else in there. Uh, you get another thing coming. There is no, and as Steve Quayle, our good friend, says, there are no uh, political solutions to spiritual problems. We have a massive spiritual problem in addition to a massive problem with people who are who have infiltrated for the last generation and a half, two, I mean, the last 50 plus years. We've had this massive infiltration of globalists, uh, of communists who are uh, pushing a globalist agenda or globalists pushing a communist agenda, take your pick. And, and part and parcel to that is the destruction of the family, destruction of our, our of our rights, the inability shutting us up as as Christians, shutting us up as conservatives or as morally physically physical conservatives, and it's to take down our country from within, and they're doing a great job of it. And you know what? If we don't stand up right now, if people don't say right now, look, you're not going to force me to bake a cake. You're not going to force me to acquiesce to your perverse standards, regardless of what they are. If we don't take a stand right now, we are going to lose our country. Well, we're actually losing our country. But I agree with you, David, at the beginning of, at the, beginning of the segment. You said it's not too late. You know, while there's still life and breath, there's still hope. And, and I hope that people can take this as a rallying call. Get out there and say, you know what? You're not going to push me to do this. And I don't care. You want to find me $135,000? You can stick that where the sun don't shine. All right. Absolutely. You know, Doug, when you said that this is going to come after our First Amendment rights, we have already seen that in a case here in Houston. In Houston, we have an openly lesbian mayor who is married to someone who is uh, very high up, I think, head of Planned Parenthood in that area. And, of course, there were some conflict of interest charges about that, about money being pa passed back and forth between the Houston uh, City Council, uh, the Houston government, and Planned Parenthood. But then they went a little bit farther. What they did in the name of uh, legislation for transsexuals, they opened up, tried to open up pub ladies' public restrooms and locker rooms to men who might claim that they were women. Now, there was pushback against this by local churches, and this is how this mayor responded. She demanded from five of these churches that they give her the sermons that they had preached about this, demanded that. So there's your attack on the First Amendment, uh, both free speech as well as freedom of religion. It took the state Supreme Court to come in. Oh, the other thing that happened with this, Doug, was they, they came up, they, they got a, uh, uh, a signature drive set up to take back this law, and they manipulated this. The city secretary certified that enough signatures had been turned in, but the mayor and the city's attorney manipulated the results to avoid having a popular vote. So this whole thing went to the Texas Supreme Court. They said, you are either going to repeal this ordinance or you will put it up to a vote. So at least in this particular case, that has been stood down. But look at the tyranny between that. The oh, First yeah. Amendment, both aspects of the First Amendment. We're going to take a break and we're going to come back with uh, Doug Hagman of Hagman and Hagman and a new article up on Infowars.com. Obama speaks out against organ harvesting of African albinos only. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight and we're talking to Doug Hagman of Hagman and Hagman.com. A, the CEO of a uh, multi-state licensed investigative agency. We've been talking to him about these Planned Parenthood videos. Of course, the uh, issue that it is not out of context, it is not a sting. That is always the defense that comes up as an investigator. He pointed that out to us. But we've also been talking about the satanic connections to it as well. And this story just broke, Doug, on Infowars.com from Mikhail Thelen. Obama speaks out against organ harvesting 
of African albinos. This is what he has to say. People with albinism in Africa are being killed and their body parts harvested for ritual purposes. My request to you is to raise this issue with the heads of state of African countries to bring the atrocities to an end. He called the tradition foolish. He said it's infuriating. I have no patience for it. And then he says this, the notion that any African would discriminate against somebody because of the color of their skin after what black people around the world have gone through is crazy. Well, let's explain something to Obama. There's a far greater proportion of black babies that are aborted at Planned Parenthood than any other group. And if you want to get upset about the fact that these organs are being harvested because these people are suffering from uh, albinism, all these babies are the same on the inside. All these babies that are being killed and chopped up and having their body parts sold for profit by Planned Parenthood are all the same on the inside. They could care less about the skin, at least we think. They certainly don't care about the color of the skin. Your comments, Doug? Well, obviously, Obama needs the, the, the refresher in history. Um, look, Planned Parenthood, the abortion, the entire abortion industry was built upon uh, the eradication of blacks from from uh, the population. Absolutely. And, mm -hmm. Okay, I mean, that's the bottom line. So for him to make a, a ridiculous statement like that, tells me that he's either so far out of the, the loop historically or is so deceitful uh, that, that I, I don't know, is he believing his own lies? But the bottom line is this. You're absolutely right. We're talking about a human life here. We're not talking about an albino uh, the, the tissue sample or anything like that. We're talking about a human life. And people better understand uh, that abortion on demand, abortion is the number one killer of all the things in 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 our nation yes and you know so but with respect to the article that you broke and that, that that's a very interesting article and i certainly would urge people to, to really read that bottom line here is uh, the organ harvesting of african albinos as, as i see on your screen there uh that's happening here in this country for crying out loud don't be naive to think that uh, the organs that are being harvested for ceremonial, ritualistic purposes, it does happen. It's unpleasant to talk about, but you'll find documentation buried among uh, many accounts where this does, it is proven to be the case. And when we can make some money on the uh, unborn uh, body parts, as they're doing right now, uh, boy, that's even better. So uh, he looks at this, he strains at this little net because, you know, this is not to minimize this, but this is such a small number of people. As you're pointing out, the number of people aborted is the the largest form of murder that we've got going on, mass murder that we've got going on right now. So he takes a very narrow segment of this and speaks out in outrage, ironically, about organ harvesting, ironically, about Africans, when it is African Americans that this whole organization was set up to target. Exactly. It's just absolutely amazing. And the disabled and, and, and those mm -hmm. uh, of a certain type of, uh, of race or, you know, yeah, I get that. Boy, I'll tell you. Well, thank you for joining us again, Doug Hagman, and you can find him at HagmanandHagman.com. That's it for today's broadcast. Join us tonight for the nightly news at 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. And if you're not a supporter of Prison Planet TV, please support us in that operation as well. That's where I normally hang out. I'm David Knight, and that's it for our broadcast.